Hi, my name is Kimberly Palgrave and I'm the in-house vet for BCF Technology. Today we'll be looking at how to position a dog correctly for performing radiographic exposure of the lateral pelvis. So we'll look at some of the bits of equipment that we need to, to perform this correctly. One bit is some form of restraint. What I find quite useful, that you can get a, a number of different things, whether they're um, purpose-made bits of cord that you can utilize to restrain the limbs. What I tend to find, and, and actually have, have around the practice, is a bit of bandaging gauze, so that works really well. Other things that you need to have is some foam wedges, or, or bits of foam, and also some sandbags. So let's get started. First off, what you can do with the gauze is actually make a loop out of it. I'm not a Boy Scout. I'll do my best. So now we have a running noose. So we can make it looser and then tighten it up. So I'll make two of those. Okay. So what we need to do is ensure that we're in the correct position to be able to evaluate the hips and the, the coxofemoral joints and the pelvis on the radiograph. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll get the legs into position. What we need to do is place the, the restraint, whichever you choose to use, and place it around the legs. I tend to put this so that you're not putting excess pressure on any one point, above the level of the hawk, tighten it, but not too much, and then make a loop with the remainder. And place it halfway down the metatarsals. I'll do that with the other leg as well. All right, so for actually positioning the limbs, what we'll do is we need to separate out the femurs so that they're lying parallel to each other, but just in a different plane. So what we'll use for this purpose is some foam wedges. What we'll also do is separate the femurs from each other by pulling the dependent leg cranially and the leg that's non-dependent on top caudally. So we'll do that just now. What you can actually do is use the whatever form of restraint that you have, whether it's a, a dedicated um, bit of equipment on the actual table itself to use to wrap the, the restraint around, or you can actually use sandbags as well. So we'll pull the dependent leg cranially. Now we'll pull the leg that's on top, caudally. As I said, we also need to be able to position the femurs separated from each other. So we'll do that with a bit of foam. Make sure the tail isn't in the way. So if you place this underneath the stifle region, that will give enough support to the limb. So what we're looking for here, the femurs are separated from each other, and we've also ensured that the stifles are separated, so the femurs are separated as well. What we now need to look for is to ensure that the pelvis is lateral and, and placed very lateral in this, this uh, right lateral recumbency. So we want to ensure that the, the wings of the, of the ilium are going to be even to each other. So what we can do is check that on the, the caudal part by looking at the level of the tuberitiae. So you can palpate this, and if you stand behind the dog, what you're looking for is the level of the tuberitiae to be even to each other. 
That looks pretty good. So what we can do now is ensure that we collimate and uh, place the center of our beam exactly where we want it to be. That's usually at the level of the coxofemoral joint. You can palpate that on the, the lateral aspect here. So with a floating top table such as this, it's, it's quite easy to maneuver. Easy, good boy. There we are. We'll just reposition. Double check. That looks good. And we're nicely collimated. Sometimes you can include the stifles if you're wanting to evaluate that as well. Just bear in mind that the focus is going to be up near the pelvis. So now we're ready to take our radiograph.